Today we are going over the top with a gruel aggro list. Let's see how it goes. What is going on everybody and welcome back to another standard gameplay video. Hope your week is starting off extraordinarily well. I do want to remind you if you did not check out the podcast that dropped this morning, please do. Uh, we had a great time Country Fried and I talking about some of the more surprising cards of Streets of New Capenna. Maybe some of the things that really stuck out to us that uh, after having played the set we found are much better than we expected. Uh, and it was an absolute blast to, to sit down and chat with him about that. Next week's podcast episode is going to be a big one, so I highly encourage you to check that out. We've got some big, big news to discuss there, so I do want you to uh, subscribe to that podcast if you're not already. It is released here on YouTube as well as on Spotify and the podcast app, so you can get it wherever you'd like, but uh, just a, an absolute blast of a time. Hope you'll uh, consider, consider subscribing to that, but let's talk about today's deck. This is by MTG Arena uh, Original Decks. This is supposedly a turn three kill deck uh which i have not i've only tested once so i haven't gotten the turn three kill but the idea is that this is essentially a very hefty gruel aggro list uh where you can create uh treasure tokens with things like gala greeters uh with things like the black market tycoon uh sacrifice those to create one one green and white citizen creature tokens which doubles up with the alliance ability on the devilish valet uh its power so the idea is very simple you're just creating as many treasures as you can um using that ability on stimulus package which it also creates its own treasure token uh and essentially just really going crazy with the devilish valet we do have morog in here as well so whenever land enters the battlefield under your control if it's your main phase there's an additional combat phase after this phase. At the beginning of that combat, untap all creatures you control. Uh, so the idea is you can get in for some extra extra combat steps along the way. The fact that this has trample and haste is absolutely ridiculous to me. Uh, as far as the rest of the deck goes, it's just a really like solid gruel aggro list in my opinion. Uh, we do have the snakeskin veil of course to protect some stuff. Uh, we do have the Ranger class, which can bolster up our board with that level 2 or get us uh, playing off the top of our deck. Uh, again, the Gallic Reader is great in a lot of scenarios. It can create the treasure tokens we need, but it's also just really good at gaining us some life or powering itself up. And then again, if we get extra combat steps, this can become a threat of its own. Uh, we do have Fable of the Mirror Breaker. This can create some treasure tokens, draw us into the deck, etc. Uh, Etsushi is very good at creating treasure tokens or giving us the option to play a couple of extra cards, depending on where we're at in the game, of course. Uh, Security Rocks can cheapen stuff up as well, which is really nice. Uh, now, the the it costs um, red and green to pay spells mana cost, but you have to use treasure tokens to do it. Now, thankfully, this deck is very good at creating treasure tokens, so hopefully that won't be a problem. Uh, as far as the lands go, I believe there's 23, yes. Uh, and really the only uh, tech land is the Den of the Bugbear that gives us a little bit of extra uh, umph, so to speak, uh, in that uh, that creature slash land slot. So that's really, really nice. Have that uh, that 61 card uh, trademark of MTG original decks and exactly what we are expecting. So this is going to be a really fun one. I do want to say a huge thank you to MTG Arena original decks for creating this list, for sharing this list. I'm excited to try this one out. We haven't been doing too much in the way of aggro yet uh and so this is actually a first for us i think um in terms of the new set and all that stuff so i'm excited to see where this one goes guys let's jump right in let's see if, if uh we can get some wins here all right guys here we are for game number one and this is a bit of an interesting one but i do think we can keep it based on black market tycoon and fable uh this is a bit of a slower hand for sure but uh, we do have some, you know, turn two, turn three, turn four plays. And then by that point, hopefully we can get Morog down and just kind of finish things off. But we'll obviously see what sticks around and what doesn't as we get further along. Uh, the creating of the treasure token here with the Black Market Tycoon. This is one of those cards where because it deals two damage to you uh, during your upkeep, you want to create the treasure token and then use it immediately, uh, which is a bit odd sometimes because, oh, that's very good. I like to stockpile treasure. <laughs> Uh, for the most part, you know, unless I you just need it right away, which is perfectly fine. But this does really help us get to either the at sushi or the stimulus package play here. So we'll see what happens. Snow all the way. Okay. There's the Gallag readers as well. That's interesting. So what I'm actually going to do is go ahead and create the at sushi. 
Um, and again, this is just giving us a lot of extra stuff that we can do uh, in the upcoming turns here. If they they can fight off potentially the, the Black Market Tycoon, I do expect that this is going to have Blizzard Brawls, those kinds of things in it. Uh, but more than likely, they want to ramp into something here. Uh, would be my guess. But hey, might be wrong. Guys, I really do hope your Monday is starting off well. Uh, we've been really enjoying Streets of New Capenna. It's been an absolute blast. I've been loving a lot of the decks that we've gotten to play. Wow, are they going to like double up just to fight off the Atsushi? They totally are. Wow. Bold. Very bold. Um, Part of me doesn't want to play the Treasure Tokens. I'm actually going to do this because we don't have a land in hand anyway. Uh, and I'd rather get one. There we go. That was a bold play. Doubling up just to kill the Atsushi was uh, pretty interesting. Um, we avoid the damage here. That would have been six damage to the face <laughs> if we had uh, done what we were planning to do there. I'm curious. To... Okay. Interesting. Um, excellent. So let's go ahead and do this. Pretty straightforward. Um, I do really want to play the, uh, the Vandal here. So what we can do, uh, let's do this, I think, and we can use the van, we're going to take a little bit of damage here, but this really sets us up well for the next turn, so let's create a treasure token, let's get that devilish vandal out, um, and I think, I think what we'll do is just throw a 1-1 one, one counter here. We're going to take it kind of easy this turn. Let's go ahead and attack with the Vandal. Or Valet. Wow. I keep saying Vandal. Obviously not a, a good block on their end thanks to the uh, Sculptor of Winter. Kind of an interesting turn from the opponent last turn. I was not sold on that being the right play, but that was a very overly aggressive play. Okay. Cool. Very good. Um... So next turn, we've got the Stimulus Package, which does combo off a little bit here. It's not going to be, you know, massive, but it does help us out quite a bit um, to, to really go crazy with the Valet. I wish we could get Morog down. I don't think we can. If we draw an untapped land, we might be able to. Obviously not going to block this. There's no reason to. Just take three. That's fine. All right another valet wow um <laughs> that's really funny um okay so let's do this let's do this so this comes with those two treasure tokens so what we can do is sack here do this i just kind of want to see this happen so we're kind of just doing this for the fun of it <laughs> uh yeah we'll create a tap treasure token they're good gaming us already. Uh, I'm wondering if they just know the the combo here. Um, we'll go ahead and do this. Um, put the 1-1 one, one counter here. Might as well. I'm going to end up getting to do all of these, so that's kind of fun. And the Black Market Tycoon uh, with the Stimulus Package is a very, very good little combo. But I don't like having the Black Market Tycoon out too early if that makes sense uh let's go ahead and do this um now worth noting they can just like block with the asikas chariot or double block this uh but it still has trample um <laughs> so there's still a good bit of damage coming in i'm not going to attack with the gallic readers for obvious reasons um the nice thing is next turn we have another devilish valet <laughs> so we're actually in pretty reasonable shape here um cool so sure they killed the, the the first valet but we've got more coming uh as well as just a morog <laughs> which is pretty good um we'll see if we can if we draw a land off the top we can tycoon morog landfall it and then uh basically just get extra attack steps but we haven't won yet worth noting um they could certainly have a good bit here but we uh we do have just another ballet so okay so <laughs> um i don't think that's the play as cool as that would be <laughs> um the morog would be really really sick but 
I think we just go for the valet. Alright. Uh, we'll create the treasure token. Uh, we'll go ahead and sack the treasure token. This only gets us the... Well, yeah, I mean, this kind of gets us going. Put the 1-1 one -one counter here. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Great thing is this deck creates its own blockers really, really well. Um, MTG Arena original decks did a great job building this list, by the way. If you couldn't already tell, it's just really, really fun. Um, and then we drop this and give it, or get it up to eight. And then I think we can just attack basically with everything. And I mean, even if we do lose, it's, or even if they block, it's fine. So this is guaranteed like basically four or five damage through and then we've got all of these so yeah i think we're good um i'm just gonna hit attack all <laughs> so i really don't think it's gonna matter at this point um they can kill the galligators here if they want but i don't think it's gonna matter yep Awesome. They let it through. That was amazing, guys. Beautiful, beautiful combo. Uh, great way of showcasing the deck as well. Let's go ahead. Let's jump into a game two. Let's see if we can get another win. What's up, guys? Before we jump into the next game, I just want to remind you, if you would like to pick up this month's Patreon rewards, feel free to do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll keep this. We have really no major uh treasure token generators aside from the gallic readers um without the stimulus package it's a little bit slow but we do have the devilish valet as well as the at sushi like we've got some good plays i'll go ahead and lead with the the den of the bugbear representing a red can mean a lot but i don't think it will here uh excellent so we did get our fourth land that does guarantee us the turn four at sushi if not sooner although i don't think it can be sooner <laughs> um I'll go ahead and play this for red. I'll try and land this. Chances are they could have any number of things, but looks like they don't. Easy uh, damage here. And now, actually, I mean, we're getting our way up to the Morog, which is quite nice. There's the Infernal Grass. Perfectly fine. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Um, what do we think is more important here? I think we can play this. Um, I'm gonna go for the treasure token here. I think this just guarantees us that turn six Morog place. So like, or uh, I guess technically turn five Morog play? I don't know. It gets us where we kind of need to be. So I'm cool with that. Um, the question becomes, what do we want to do here? Hmm. Actually gonna try for the at sushi chances are this gets like countered or destroyed pretty quickly here but interesting i'm gonna keep going for the treasure tokens just because this is a kill stuff kind of deck and i fully expect that they've got sweepers they've got ways to deal with basically anything we throw down so they're gonna exile this that's a great way to deal with the uh at sushi because it does get around the death triggers um so the question is do we go for this i actually don't think we do i think we can wait if we get a land morog is looking a lot more exciting um especially now wow they kind of committed to that pretty easily i would have instant speed done this so that way you would have left up well i guess they needed a land probably um okay uh i'll auto pay that see what happens <laughs> uh this could finish the game but it looks like they've got a, a play for us here which is fine um i'll do this i'll do this all right uh let's attack oh we misplayed it didn't we we we're supposed to play the land second main so that was an oops on our end but that's okay um, at this point, I mean, we have a devilish valet. We also have a Gallagreeders in hand. Like, we should be able to finish this game pretty easily. Yeah, there we go. 
Uh, wow, just annihilated Demir control there. <laughs> that was pretty amazing. Let's jump into a game three, guys. All right, everybody, here we are for game number three. Uh, yeah, I mean, we can keep this. It's a little bit weird. Like, double tycoon is interesting. Huh, okay. I mean, I'll just play this. Um, unlucky witness. Interesting. All right, so Sanguine Statuette, interesting. It's gonna be a very fun matchup, I'm sure. Uh, let's go ahead and play the Gallag Readers here. Um, pretty easy start. I mean, we could have, I guess, gone for the Black Market Tycoon, which may have been better. It would have set up a Security Rocks play on turn three, which I guess would have been better. But this is the Rakdos Sacrifice deck, which is a very annoying deck. This becomes a 3-3, three, three. they get to ping get to do quite a bit i'm actually not gonna block um hopefully they don't have a burn spell looks like they might not uh which is good let's do this that gives us the snakeskin veil play let's do this is it the gain to life or is it the treasure token i'm gonna go for the treasure token not 100% sold on it though. I think we just passed. Life gain will be important here, but we do just have bigger stuff in our deck, so like at some point we might be able to just kind of get them. Um, Alright, there's the Obnixilis. Fully expected that to be uh, a very prominent piece of this deck. Uh, don't love this, obviously. It's a very, very scary play. Um. My assumption is they create the devil, and then they plus up. Uh, yeah. So, what do we discard? I actually think we can discard a tycoon. I don't think we want to take extra damage here if we don't have to, so. All right. Yep. Okay. Uh, so we do take two here, don't we? That kind of sucks. Yep. Um, oops, there we go. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to do this. Uh, we'll auto pay with the treasures. That's fine. Uh, I think we gain two. Um... I am actually going to attack here. So we're being a little proactive with this um, just to get rid of something. Um, again, a bit of an aggressive play here, I know, but we kind of need to get the artifacts off the field so they can't keep sacrificing them. All right, well, got deadly dispute. That's pretty good. But this does get the, uh, the Gallag Readers out of, out of the uh, Devils. Play. all right so now they've got the thing again and they can keep going we really just need a non-land card that'd be helpful uh security rocks is nice because i mean it is a a big thing that they have to deal with but we just need like a creature um yeah i will discard the only thing that we really have to worry about mana cost wise would be like a morog but i mean at this point, Morog isn't going to be playable anyway. Well, it is, I guess, with Black Market Tycoon. Maybe that was a bad play then. Just another Snake Skin Veil. Okay. Um, so let's see. We need to get rid of the Obnixilis. Is <laughs> so what I'm going to do is, a, I think, attack like this. They're going to, I'm sure, block in some meaningful way, which is fine. But this Obnixilis is dying, I think, regardless, which is great. Okay. Only blocking that way. That's interesting. Uh, yep. So they do get two cards off the top. Meat Hook. That's That Warlock class is so good. Um, I'm not sold that that was the right play at all, but um, I do feel like it was semi-reasonable. I'm going to... 
decline. Respect respectfully decline. Um, I don't know that this is the right call, but we're gonna try it. My thing is, if they meet hook for four, exactly, we do this, and that gets this out of range. Uh, so we get to keep the six five. That was exactly what we wanted to do, and they also can't ping this for one because it now has hexproof. So now we basically have a way to for sure kill the Obnixilis. We're still not like out of the woods at all, but it gives us the best chance, I think. This is a rough matchup, by the way. This this Racto Sacrifice deck, for anybody that didn't know, got so, so much better <laughs> with, uh, with the way that the format kind of shook out. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, I mean, I think we... I think we just have to be aggressive. They just get to free block, but... Unfortunately, this is like slowly killing ourselves because we don't have a way to... We keep drawing land, so we don't really have a way to push through anything, uh, which is really unfortunate, but... And they're gonna be able to just keep creating these one ones pretty regularly. Uh, yep. And what a great deck. This deck is very, very good. So well played by the uh, the opponent here. They're doing the most. I think they just win. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go ahead and concede, guys. That's okay. You know what? We can't win them all, but that was a blast. Let's go ahead. Let's talk about this deck. All right, guys. So uh, as far as this deck goes, Gruul Ramp, or, or excuse me, Gruul Aggro, not Ramp. Uh, first and foremost, MTG Original uh, or Arena Original decks. Uh, thank you so much for creating this list. This was an absolute blast. I'm realizing how yellow I look right now. This this light is a little yellow. Um, I really do appreciate it. This deck was amazing to play. Uh, I think it's very good. We didn't get the turn three kill, but we did really get to show off the combo in that first game uh, with the stimulus package, the Gala Greeters, as well as the uh, Devilish ballet absolute blast of a combo uh being able to really just continuously reiterate the devilish uh valet's alliance ability is amazing uh i think personally i like it more in like a scoot swarm style deck where you can kind of go off by just playing lands uh because then you're not investing quite as much mana into that and you can also incorporate other things now it does slow down the deck potentially a little bit um but it is still very relevant i think it's a very good combo uh so overall an absolute blast. Thank you so much for sharing this one. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Again, I really hope you have a fantastic Monday. I hope you'll go back, listen to the Glorious Sunrise podcast. Today's episode was a blast to record. Uh, and again, stay tuned because next week, next Monday, we've got a blast of an episode. We're going to really have a, have a good time with that one. So I do encourage you to check that one out. But guys, thank you so much again for watching. Have a fantastic week. I'll see you later.